Hollywood production cycle that they're, they're dealing with very brilliant people who have an instinct for this stuff. But what I'm saying is, not all of us are blessed by the gods. <laughs> a lot of us need to understand the mechanics of change and how much is needed. That's the tool I went looking for. I mean, studied over and over and stop and go. Hundreds and hundreds of, of successful movies. I was, I was looking for the paradigm of successful movies that breaks down into small enough pieces of movie and pages and scenes that each step of the way, a writer knows what they need to accomplish next. Doesn't that overcome that moment of brain freeze? What happens next, right? Well, what if you knew what happens next? There's danger here, too. I am not talking about a computer program. I am not talking about something, you know, plug in three of X and a couple of Y. No, you'll see, you'll see that this is, that's where this is going. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about a tool that leaves in completely formed and intact individual creativity and imagination and thought. It doesn't touch that. It's just about the mechanics of, if you want to know what happens next, approximately this, and leaves the rest to you. So we know we have a hero, and we know what the hero, who the hero must be within certain parameters, right? Remember, it doesn't matter the genre, it doesn't matter at all. So the hero has a goal. That's when you know you have an idea for a movie. It's not just when you come up with an idea for a hero. That's wonderful. That's the start, yes. That hero has to have a worthy goal of enormous importance. It has to be high stakes. This is, this is a, perhaps another conversation for another time, but there are only two kinds of stakes that will work in a movie. Only two. And both of them are life and death. That's it. That's the kind of high stakes you need. It needs to be cranked up. Yeah. It's either physical life and death, which is what about eighty percent of all the movies Hollywood cranks out, or it is metaphorical life and death, the life and death of the soul. You know that sometimes we talk about people who are so defeated and so morose. We talk about them as the Walking Dead. Something inside of them has died. All the metaphors. You know, if that's the state to which your hero, the state of which your hero is risking by not accomplishing their goal, fine, that works. It's metaphorical life and death. That's why love stories work and romance stories work. Only and if that romance and relationship, the importance of it is driven to the stage of metaphorical life or death. There's usually marriage to somebody, the wrong person that is eminent or something like that, because we're willing to suspend disbelief, right, in, 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 the, in the parameters of a, of a romance, because technically marriage means is a permanent bond, and once they're gone, they're gone. Once they're off the playing field, they're gone forever, and your one moment to seize ha personal happiness forever is gone. This is metaphorical life and death. Two major things happen in Act One. Act One is the introduction. Act One's run between what, 25 pages and 35 pages, as a rule. We have what we call the inciting incident, right? The inciting incident. You've heard it, what is it, the catalyst. The, they call it different things, right? For me, the one that, that works the best is inciting incident. Something has to happen in the first five or 10 minutes of the movie that gets the movie started. And then by the end, there's something extremely important happens at the end of Act 1, which signals that this is, in fact, the end of Act 1. I have a name for that. There's lots of names. So the plot point one, there's, there's all kinds of names for it. I believe none of those names that I've heard before contain emotionally what this moment must be and how it must operate. I call it Stunning Surprise 1. Stunning Surprise 1. Stunning Surprise 1 is the first of the two most important moments in your whole movie. Stunning Surprise has been defined as it comes out of the blue, it changes everything, and the hero's life will never be the same again. It's a lot of weight on one dramatic moment. But 
once you understand emotionally what is supposed to be going on there, see, act one is the hero's life yesterday. Then the stunning surprise happens, and the hero is thrown into what is called the special world of act two. This is a whole new thing and a whole new world. In some movies, sci-fi movies in particular, it's really clean when that change is made. It's really clean. Like in The Matrix, the good one, the first one. Forget the next one. Stunning surprise one in that movie is he goes to see he goes to see Morpheus, the blue pill, the red pill, so he picks the red pill. That is not the stunning surprise, because that alone contains no emotional weight, no no dramatic power. That is you know that's supposed to be happening here at that level, the kind of um. Stunning surprise one, and then he goes in and he's just like you know it's like any pill you take, and all of a sudden he starts to sweat, start things start getting weird. Remember, and he's got the the. The silver is coming up, and that artificially adds a ticking clock, and they're yelling, no, no, we're going to lose him, right? How many times did they cry that in that movie? And they're, they're adjusting the dials very, very quickly, but it takes over in the silver, and he wakes up in reality for the first time in his life. He wakes up in a birthing pod, catches his breath, and looks out and sees an infinite sea of human birthing pods. This is the real world. See, it's not the hero's ordinary world, the lie, they're calling it the lie. He wakes up in the real world for the first time, and it's just overwhelming. This, and, and, and these chains, you know, he's taken and totally manipulated, he has no control. That's the world he will be fighting against for the rest of the movie, right? But you see the, I mean, this is, I, I picked a big movie and it's an action, et cetera, so to make the point, small moments in smaller movies can be just as powerful. So you have a hero, you have a goal, a worthy high stakes goal, then you have an adversary, a seemingly undefeatable adversary. I read a lot of books that say your adversary has to be just as strong as your hero. No, don't believe that. Your adversary has to be enormously more powerful and more strong than your hero. It has to look like there is no bloody way your hero can beat that adversary. Then you've got a conflict. Then you throw in courage, obsession, incredible hard work, and smarts to find ways, you know, to find the way to victory, whatever it is.